everyone, it's Jeannie here. Today, I'm so glad to be joined by two members of one of the most beloved groups in Christian music with more than 750 million streams and over 4 million um, just uh, streams in total, or I don't know, the trio <laughs> Sela is who I'm talking about. But right now I'm joined by Todd and Alan. Thank you guys for joining me. Hey, Jamie. Oh, Great thanks for having me. So I've, I've long loved your music, uh, loved you guys. Um, I had the privilege of, of starting interviewing with you guys very early on in my uh, media career. And um, I've just always been such a fan not because of your music, although the music is great, it's anointed, it's beautiful, it's God honoring, but there was always something so precious about you guys individually. You all have just really beautiful, humble hearts. I always enjoy talking to you and people love your music. And here we are 25 years together, Selah, the group Selah has been in existence. Talk about that. Let's start there. That's amazing. What a milestone. Yeah, Alan, you go ahead. Oh, yeah, big milestone. Yeah, we, uh, you know, the music industry is really, I mean, it's a competitive field, even the Christian music industry. A lot of times people may not see Christian music as, hey, you know, it may not be as challenging or, or I, I, not to say cutthroat, but, you know, it's as competitive as mainstream, but it is, There's, you know, there's a lot of people wanting to do music and, um, and there's a lot of great artists out there and we're just fortunate, you know, that God gave us favor and I, I think we've always tried to love people and make strong music i think that's helped for it but to have a quarter century career in this today's music industry climate is pretty pretty rare nowadays you know like there, you know like I, i'm uh, i'll be 53 this year so i grew up you know i was born in 1970 i was growing up in the 70s and the 80s but like artists like you know barbara streisand or dolly parton or elton john whoever that have had like 50 60 year careers that's kind of gone like even like taylor swift as famous as she is and as well as well as she's doing i don't know that she'll have a 50 or 60 year career the industry's changed so much so those yeah. days might be gone so we're really thankful you know to at least so far i've had a 25 year career that means a lot to us and it's been because people still support us by streaming our music maybe they're still buying cds i know cds aren't around much anymore i'm still a cd guy myself but me but they've too. been supporting us and they come to our concerts still. And uh, and it's awesome at our concerts to see just the wide range. We have like grandparents bringing their grandchildren and, you know, we all all ages in between. And or we'll have somebody stop by the table and say, I'm buying a CD for myself, but I'm also buying one for my mother or my grandmother. So I think we've hit a lot of generations. I think we've been fortunate to have a lot of generational, a lot of uh a lot of wide age range in the the folks that we appeal to which has been really wonderful yeah that's absolutely amazing what a an awesome feat that is you know to be able to be cross-generational I think that's mm -hmm. kind of hard in this day and age too oh, yeah. um you guys released three albums last year I was looking crazy through the catalog and I was like wow you had um your it's like uh, an album with original music then you had a hymn project that you released, and then you had a Christmas album. So talk about that, Todd. I know um, it's, you know, just being able to create music still and then wanting to continue to put out music that people know throughout the years, the ages. Yeah, so I'll talk about the first project, and then Alan can fill in on the, the hymns and the Christmas one. But for people who don't know, I grew up in Congo. Uh, as a missionary kid and lived there for eight years. And so every, almost every album we've ever done, I've recorded a song in Kituba or Lingala. Kituba is the language that I grew up speaking and still speak. Um, and Lingala is one of the main popular languages in, in Congo. There's about 200 dialects, about five major languages. So um, I, there's just, I've always had an international outlook um, just from growing up where I grew up. And uh, had an idea several years ago about what if we could showcase um, songwriters from around the world to show how God is moving, not just in the States, but he's moving in every country. He's moving in every nation. And so um, I uh, met with the president of Integrity Music and I said, hey, I have this idea. I'd really like to do this. You know, what do you think about that? And he said, it's interesting you say that because 
Um, his name's JB and he's probably been to 70 countries. And he said, um, every country that I've gone to, they'll sing a Chris Tomlin song or a Sela song, but they always sing their songs the loudest. Mm -hmm. uh, they always sing their songs with a different passion. And that just really resonated with me. Um, and so I thought, what if we could take these songs and do them in English and introduce them to the English speaking world. And so it we it comprised of uh, six songs uh, from uh, Brazil, Indonesia, India, France, Sweden, and Holland. And they're just incredible songs. Mm -hmm. I mean, really incredible songs written by different songwriters. And we ended up actually uh, doing a collaboration with Gabriel Guedes, who is a Brazilian gospel artist. Mm -hmm. And he um, he wrote a song called Glory Hallelujah that we did in English, but I'd always wanted to, if it made sense, to do it as a, a duet in the original language. Sorry, I've got my, I needed to turn off my do not disturb stuff here. Um, <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> but um, all, all that to say, it ended up, uh, we sang in Portuguese, and so mm -hmm. we brought in um, someone in Nashville who's fluent in Portuguese, and so she was in the studio just to make sure we were singing things accurately and uh, it turned out to be this just beautiful duet. So that's on the project too, but it's called One Name. And that kind of summarizes the whole thing. It is one name. We are one church and you have believers who are the Holy Spirit is working through and, and we need to hear the songs that they have, you know, that the way that God speaks to them in the West, we need to hear those messages, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. whether it's suffering yeah. they've gone through or whatever they've so been true. through. So, so yeah, true. so that's that first project. And then it's our 25th. So Alan can share more, but we decided to make ourselves go crazy by doing two more projects <laughs> and releasing them. So yeah. yeah. Gee, I don't know if we'll <clears throat> probably <clears throat> excuse me. We'll probably never do uh certainly not three albums in a year, probably never two again. But but it fit <laughs> because last year was our 20 uh, you know, we started in 97. So last year, 2022 was our 25th anniversary. And so I thought it would be kind of cool to go back. Our very first album was nearly all just piano vocal and um, and you know, maybe a few instruments, a little acoustic guitar, some strings, but very, very simple album, nearly all hymns. And so and we made it. We weren't signed to a record label yet. Just a, I'll try to quick recap for anybody who's watching who may not be totally familiar with this. Um, we we started in 97. Uh, we weren't planning to be a group at all. Todd and I knew each other from college. And he came and led church, uh, led uh, the congregation in singing when one my music minister couldn't be there one day, one Sunday. And the church loved him, which I knew they would. And so they said, hey, can you guys put together a concert like in two weeks? And so we were like, you know, and you're you're young and dumb and you don't know how hard it is to put together a <laughs> concert. So we were like, sure, you know. And then we realized, oh, man, that's not a lot of time. So then Todd roped Nicole, his sister, Nicole Sponberg, into, in, who was our first female member, roped her in to help him. And we really... There wasn't time to write original songs. There wasn't time to put a band together. So we just did piano vocal and we just did a lot of hymns and, you know, just songs that we loved and that moved us. And we thought, well, you know, if they, if we feel something, hopefully the the folks, the congregation will feel something. And so we did that. And then it kind of took off from there. People were like, can you come to my church? Can you come to my church? And then uh, we went and did a, an event in Indiana for uh, teen teenagers. And we were like and like Todd always says on the way up, he was like, what are we doing going to sing hymns for teenagers? And we did, and they loved it. And Todd's uh, mom, parents, uh, mom was at the show, and she said, hey, this is really special. Why don't you guys just put this down on tape for us? And it was really meant just to be like a thank you to, uh, you know, as Todd said, he grew up in Congo. He and Nicole and his family have been missionaries out there. His grandfather, you know, for a long time. His grandfather went out in the 30s, and then, you know, he grew up in the 70s out there. So long history with Congo. And so they wanted to put, to, his mom was like, the idea was we would record these hymns and it would be like a thank you to their major donors for the for the charity, you know. And so we um, and so we we did that. And then uh, Nicole was already signed to Curb as a solo artist, kind of a solo pop artist. And she had gotten permission to do our little project, and she took it over to the label and said, "Hey, you know, I did this with my brother and a friend, and here you go." And Mike Curb, the label head, took it home, heard it. The next day, Nicole right. called me and left me a message and saying, "Hey." Mike wants to sign us as a group. He's going to keep me as a solo artist. And that's really how it happened. And so, you know, I remember, and so then they bought, they signed us on and that became our first album uh, that, that we didn't change it much at all. We added a little guitar, like I said, and some strings, but it was very simple. 
And so I thought, man, here we are 25 years later, which is a dream in itself, like we've already talked about. But as I told Todd and Jason, our longtime producer, he's been producer since day one with this. His name's Jason Kyle. I said, how about, what do you guys think about kind of bookending the first 25 years? What if we do an album to celebrate our first 25 years almost just like the first album? It's not going to be heavily produced. We're back to almost all hymns, nearly all piano vocal. Because the fans have been asking for a while, like, do you think y'all think you'll ever do an album again like you did your first one? And I thought this would be the perfect time. So we did. And then also, uh, this was 20 years. Last year was 20 years since we had released our first Christmas album. Our wow. Christmas album, Rose of Bethlehem, came out in 2002. So we wanted to get last year, we wanted to, since we were celebrating the 25th, we thought, well, why not give the fans a lot of music this year? What other kind of album would make sense in addition to the One Name World album? And so we were like, how about a Christmas album? It's been 20 years. So we did that, which, yes, was a lot of work. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, but we put both of those albums came out, I believe, like October 14th last year of 2022. Yeah, yeah. And um, and so, yeah. And so we we did a lot of music last year because we wanted to celebrate. And we're also, we're very thankful again, like I said earlier, to have lasted 25 years in an industry that can be pretty, you know, it can be pretty difficult to kind of establish longevity. in. So we're oh, again, yeah, very thankful. Definitely. You know, one of the interesting you know, things too okay. about, oh, sorry, about the project no, no. is we decided, I think it might've been Alan's um, a suggestion, but it was like, let's, let's find out what people want to hear. And so we went on oh. Facebook and all of our, you know, Instagram, Twitter, all of them, and basically just asked people, hey, it's our 25th. We're thinking about doing a hymns project. What songs would you want to hear? And we got over a thousand suggestions. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and so and now not all of them were a thousand different ones because many people chose the same song. But our only requirement was it can't be a song we've ever done. It has to be a new song. Mm -hmm. And so there were just so many good suggestions. So literally like we're on Facebook live and we're on Spotify in, you know, uh, Alan has a studio out in Kingston Springs and there's this really great patio kind of deck place out in the front and people would just send suggestions. And in real time, we were kind of just listening through and going, oh, wow, that's a great hymn. I never thought of that. I'd never heard of that one. You know, what do you think about that one? And so we narrowed it down. They helped us narrow it down to about 50. And then we chose the final ended up being 13 songs, but mm -hmm. it was just really a, a neat creative process to bring everybody else in and really give them a say in what we're doing. And the number one song uh, was the love of God. And so um, that's, mm -hmm. that's one that we'll be releasing in, in about two months or as in March, depending on when this releases, yeah. um, it'll be coming out in March as a, as a single. Wow. And that's powerful. You know what I thought about too, you guys covered all the bases mm -hmm. last year, you know, you gave the, the, the international kind of worship, you know, vibe you, and the music was so great for that. Then you, you do the hymns, right. For everyone that wants that. And then you got the holiday music, you covered all <laughs> the bases. I love that. So I'm not going to go on much longer, but I wanted to ask you guys this 25 years of music, 25 years of music ministry, because you guys mm -hmm. are ministers. Um, what do you think the message uh, for the season that we're you were in? Like, well, what is it? I, you mm -hmm. know, twenty we a lot has changed in twenty five years. You know, it's the the news is scary to watch. It's crazy out here. <laughs> what do you yeah. think is the message for the season? Mm. Wow, um, that's a great question. You know, yeah. uh, for us, uh, always our kind of guide words in the studio from the very beginning, twenty five years ago was we wanted the songs we recorded to give comfort and encouragement to people. And, um, you know, whether it's in their personal life, you can always look at what's going on in the headlines and everything. But, but we definitely wanted, and it's certainly since the first album was hymns, you know, hymns were written out of such a deep place of pain. Uh, nearly all of them were. And I think that's why they've lasted so long. And I think that's why they speak to people's hearts so much wow. is because, I think people instinctive, you know, they weren't written to be a, a radio hit. And there's nothing wrong with getting together to write radio hits, but the hymns especially came out of places of pain, nearly all the right, you know. And so I, I think that resonates with people still all these years later. Um, but um, yeah, so for me, it's always been kind of our watchwords of comfort and encouragement. And I hope still for this day and age, and you're right, it's 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 getting pretty intense and scary with the headlines. I hope those two words will still be what people draw from our music and of course todd you add what you'd like to add you have a good international yeah, perspective 
Well, I, I think one thing that you're going to start hearing a lot more about um, where we're headed is transhumanism. And so atheism is probably over time is slowly going to die out, actually, so, uh, believe it or not. Um, but transhumanism is really going to uh, start to grow more as the occult grows more, as um, people get into spirituality uh, more and they're checking things out. And so it's going to go back to that very first question that Satan asked Eve, you know, did he say you couldn't eat of this? And if you do, you'll be like him. You'll be like, you'll be like, you'll be a God. And um, even Satan himself and Isaiah, he said, I will be like him. I will raise myself up. And so you're going to see a, uh, yeah, people will probably say, oh yeah, Jesus is real, but he's not the supreme God and we can be gods. And with the way that technology is moving and what they're doing with uh, DNA, with genetics, um, I, unfortunately, I think in China, they just uh, combined a monkey and a human uh, like cells from both. And um, you're there, you're seeing, hearing stories about them, uh, you know, the different countries are making super soldiers where they're basically altering the DNA. And so wow. there will be a lot of good things where if you have cancer, if you have this disease, or if you have that disease, the, the technology is moving so rapidly, we'll have a lot of cures for those things. But also uh, you're going to see where we're going to be able to live longer, a lot longer. And, and, oh, you, you cut your arm off, you know, in a car accident. Well, hey, we can grow another one. That that's a great thing. But where it's going to lead is, we start to believe that we're God, and we start to believe that we are above God, and that's what transhumanism is. And so, I think for the church, it's very important that we remember, even when in in always in history, whether it was Israel or the church, whenever Israel was attacked or whenever Israel turned away from God, the minute that they humbled themselves, the minute that they confess their sin and they focus on worshiping Jesus or worshiping God at, at that point and, 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 and fighting God would deliver them. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with the church, when the church is experiencing persecution, when we get to the point where we are not afraid to be persecuted and afraid and, and to be able to stand firmly on what we believe. And that really does come back to trusting in Jesus and, and really studying who he is and making disciples of, of people, um, I think that's something. So even from a musical standpoint, you know, what songs are we singing that are addressing and really focusing on, on who Jesus is, but also I think just making people aware of, you're going to start to see more people say, Hey, we can be our own gods. Um, the, the world, so the world economic forum, I think was just going on. And one mm -hmm. of the main guys there was like, you know, Jesus, he's, 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 um, you know, minor power, like he, and, and just mocking him, you know, making fun of him wow. and, uh, making a joke of him. And so you're going to see more people get into spirituality, which can be a great thing because I think in the eighties and the nineties, it was kind of, and even in the seventies and before that, you know, it was like, ah, this isn't real that you, this is just, you know, frou-frou, you know, hocus pocus, whatever, even if I was talking about Christianity, but at the same time, the church needs to be the answer. You know, we need to be able to show people because we have the power. We have the power through Jesus. We have the death and resurrection and the shedding of his blood. And he, his name is above every name. And mm -hmm. it makes the demons scatter. It makes Satan scatter. So I think those are things um, that we're going to see a lot more of in the next five to 10 years. That's going to become more of a, a, of a common term that people are going to know about. Wow. Thank you for sharing that wisdom and insight. I agree. I totally see that, you know, unfolding. And it's thanks for also helping us know what to do to kind of stay focused on the main thing and the truth. Um, thank you so much, Todd and Alan. Is there anything else that you guys would like to share? I, I, um, I think we covered everything pretty well. Just again, we're very you know, anybody who's watching and if they've been with us a long time, we, we really appreciate their support all these years. And if maybe somebody, Jenny, is just discovering us through this interview, maybe they'll check out our music. You know, we're on all the, the streaming services and our website, SalaOnline.com. And, and we're on Facebook. People can write us and all that. But we we really are grateful and thankful to have had this longevity in this industry. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm and it's great that we've known, you know, we've known you a long time, too. And it's been great. Yeah, <laughs> 
Yeah, on a practical side, just along the lines of what Alan said, if it, we're putting out more music than we ever have, so it's not mm -hmm. a thing like, hey, we've made it to 25 years, see ya. We're, <laughs> right, right. Um, we, and we've got some really exciting stuff that's going to be coming out um, yes. in it, this this summer and this fall, um, just even some collaborations. And so if you're on Spotify, follow us there. You know, if you're on Amazon, make sure and, and uh, like our, our ad add Sela, And that way you get updated when a new single comes out, they'll Spotify will send you an email. And you'll have our image along with anyone else that you follow. And it'll be like Sela's new singles out and you can check that out. Um, but we're going to be doing that on a pretty consistent basis. And even with these hymn, the hymns project and the Christmas project, they're available on CD, mm -hmm. but as of right now, you can only stream digitally two songs from the Christmas record. We'll release another two in November and December um, but then uh, with the hymns project, there's only one song that's available right now. And then we're going to release over the next three months, new singles, and then drop the project for everyone. So if you follow us, that's where you'll be able to really hear the latest hymns that we're doing or songs that we're doing and anything that comes out further.